In this video, let us continue to solve more problems based on trigonometric ratios of multiple and submultiple angles. Alright, so this problem may seem a little advanced and it may be. So, we've got this problem which says uh, prove that cosine of 2 pi by 15 times cosine of 4 pi by 15 times cosine of 8 pi by 15 times cosine of 14 pi by 15 equals 1 by 16. So let's start solving this problem. So what we're going to do to start off with is just write all these three things as it is cos of 2 pi by 15 times cos of 4 pi by 15 times cos of 8 pi by 15. But you know cos 14 pi by 15 really not required. So we can write that as cos of pi minus pi by 15. You know this is nothing but if you solve it you're going to get 14 pi by 15. So don't worry about this. All right, so what we're going to get next is cos of 2 pi by 15. Just use a bracket, cos of 4 pi by 15, cos of 8 pi by 15. Close the bracket. This is going to become, you know, it's cos of 180 minus theta. So cos of 180 minus theta. 180 minus theta lies in the second quadrant and cos is negative there. So it's going to be minus cos and 180 is not going to change. So therefore, it's going to remain cos. So minus cos of pi by 15 so that's what it's going to be all right so now let's just rearrange and write this as minus of cos pi by 15 times cos 2 pi by 15 times cos 4 pi by 15 times cos 8 pi by 15 all right so now what we'll do is uh, to simplify things let's take pi by 15 as equal to a so when you do that, this just becomes a little simpler. It just becomes minus cos a cos 2a cos 4a times cos 8a. That's what this becomes, right? So now what we can further write this as is minus cos a times cos 2a cos 2 square a and cos 2 cube a, all right? So now what we can do next is now as we know from the formula that we did in the previous video let me rewrite that for you again here it is cos a cos 2a cos 2 square a cos 2 cube a and so on up till cos 2 to the power n minus 1 into a equals sine of 2 to the power n a divided by 2 to the power n sine a right so we're going to use this particular expression now so what it's going to become is it's going to become minus sine 2 to the power n a right so the n if you see here it is largest value is 3 so the n is going to be 3 plus 1 so it becomes 2 to the power 4 a divided by 2 to the power 4 sine a right so what next now what is this this is going to be equal to minus of sine 16 a divided by 16 sine a right so we can write 16 a as minus sine of 15 a plus a the reason for this you'll note shortly 15 a plus a divided by 16 sine a so we have taken that pi by 15 equals a therefore pi becomes equal to 15 a right so it becomes minus sine of pi plus a divided by 16 sine a and sine of pi plus a is nothing but 180 plus theta. It is in the third quadrant, doesn't belong to sine, so therefore it is a negative. So it's already a negative, so it's going to be negative of negative sine because 180 doesn't change. So sine a divided by 16 sine a, which is positive sine a divided by 16 sine a. So sine a sine a gets cancelled, and 1 by 16, it is there as RHS. So that ends this problem as well as this video a crucial thing in this problem is uh, remembering about this formula it's not a very you know vague thing to not remember it is like pretty much on your face you know when you can write this it's like cos a cos 2a cos 2 square a cos 2 cube a and so on and so forth and then so that can be written as sine into 2 to the power n to a divided by 2 to the power n into sine a and you know that n equals the largest exponent here plus 1 so we have sine 2 to the power 4 a divided by 2 to the power 4 sine a and then the rest is just history i'm sure you know that so another important thing is substituting pi by 15 as a you know the right places that's another important thing 
And the reason we eliminated this 14 is, you know, it's not a perfectly, you can't write it as an exponent of something, 2 cube, nothing gives you 14. Whereas here, you know, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 3, and so on. So that's why, you know, we look to eliminate these kind of numbers. So if you had actually wondered why we did that, well, this is why we did that. So that's the end of the problem as well as the video. I'll see you in the forthcoming videos with more problems based on trigonometric ratios of multiple and submultiple angles. Thank you.